Guys, Arts Backpacking 360. Today's video, a complete preview and detailed instructions on how to set up the new REI Quarter Dome 1. Check it out. Okay, so today's video is not so much geared towards uh, the specs and such on the new uh, Quarter Dome. You can get all that stuff on REI's website. You can go in there and you can use their software for um, comparisons with the competition and so forth and so on. I'm not so much interested in that. This is geared more towards people who um, are kind of on the fence. They want to get the tent, but maybe they're a long ways from the nearest REI and they really want to see what it's like, how to set it up, where the guy outs are, uh, some personal thoughts on it. I've had a lot of backpacking tents and I can tell you right now I love this tent. So as we get into the video, um, I will tell you why. We're going to do it kind of methodically. I'm going to set up the main body of the tent first, then I'm going to take the camcorder because I don't have my camera guy with me here today. And uh, after I set up the main body, we'll walk around. I'll show you out where all the, the guy outs are and just different notes on it. Then we'll put the fly on. We'll go over it again and then we'll actually get inside the tent and uh, point out as much as I possibly can. Uh, as if though you wanted to be able to check the tent out yourself but you can't get to it. Hopefully this will suffice. So let's get started. The only information I will give you uh, basic straight up is it's 2 pounds 10 ounces as it comes packaged right here. Uh, there's a minimum trail weight of 2 pounds 2 ounces and the difference is 2 pounds 10 ounces what you get is you get this bag. Inside of this bag is the tent body, the tent fly, and a second bag that houses the tent poles and a tent pole repair sleeve. And there's a third bag that has eight stakes, a little bit of cordage with a couple of uh, guy adjusters, and uh, a little piece of paper instructions that I got to tell you um, doesn't do a lot of give you a lot of information. Uh, there was a review on REI's website that uh, the person that was reviewing this tent, well, I won't get into it, but it didn't jive with what I found. So. Um, I don't know if they had a different model or I'm not really sure maybe I don't know maybe they changed some specs on this tent somewhere along the line relatively new model it's just come out I think within the last six months or so so let's take a quick look at it uh, we'll try to get through it quickly and just uh, give you the good stuff incidentally minimum trail weight so there's the fly and yeah I've had this thing out a number of times already there is the tent body here is the uh, tent poles. It's a hubbed pole set with the bag. Okay. Here is your tent stakes with the sleeve and a little bit of cordage. Okay. And uh, somewhere in here is a little piece of instructions. And actually, all this is is tent maintenance. So yeah, it's good to have. The instructions are actually right on the front of the bag and they're not very detailed. You have to kind of figure some of this stuff out yourself. So minimum trail weight on this, to get it down to two pounds, two ounces, you take away this bag, you take away the bag that the, uh, the poles come in, and you take away the bag and all eight tent stakes and the sleeve and the cordage that comes in there. So the only thing you would have left would be the fly, the body, and the tent poles and that's it that brings you down to two pounds two ounces so I personally I like steaks I won't use the steaks that come with this and you'll see why they're cheaper steaks there's better ones out there I prefer the V steaks um, for a variety of reasons so anyways let's get started on setting it up um, I'm gonna try to give you a bird's eye view of it I'm gonna set it up in real time in other words I'm not going to cut anything out I'm not going to fast forward it it sets up pretty quick so you can actually see I've probably set this tent up now maybe four times and it can be done in about five minutes. So uh, now that I'm actually recording it, it'll probably take me four times that long. Check it out.
Okay, so first off, if you look at the way the tent poles are laid out, they are oddballs. This is not symmetrical at all. So if you have that A-type personality, this is going to kind of throw you out a little bit. At first, I was not crazy about the idea, but you know what, man? It works, and it works well. Um, yeah, it's like you look at the way it's laid out, and it kind of goes sideways over the, over the tent. But one thing that, to note on this tent that I think is awesome is that the walls on the left and right side are near vertical. And once we get the fly on there and attach it to this, and you'll see it pulls this out even more, there's a lot of room inside this tent. And it sets up. You saw how fast that set up. That was real time. It works well where you stake out the four corners. You can hold it down, and uh, it goes up quick. So after you've staked it, then you can put your... Um, your poles in. So you've got four primary stakes that hold it out. You've got two at each end. This is the foot of the tent. Okay, and incidentally the poles have three grommets. There's one at the foot and then you have a stake on either side that pulls it out. Okay, there's nothing on the side with just the tent body the only other ones that you have are at the, at the head of the tent. And on the head of the tent, your pole comes down to a grommet. Your orange colored or gold, whatever you call that, comes down to the, uh, the entrance side of the tent. As you can see, like I said, it kind of goes, I don't know, kind of cockamamie over the side there. It's, it, it's oddball. It is not symmetrical at all, but it works. Then you've got the second pole that only comes over part way and it stops. And this guy is kind of like a ball and socket type setup. I don't know if you can see that real well or not, but it just pops right into place. You just pop it on. Then on the top here, it's got two of them that, like I said, I wish I had a cameraman so you could actually see, but they actually fit right in there. I don't know how well you can see that. Of course, now trying to put it back up in there with just one hand. Okay, so, and then the rest of them are just the little hooks that go on there, and they go on real easy. This thing sets up fast. It, it really does impress me. Uh, I like it. It's a side entrance, which makes it nice. Uh, so that's about all there is on the tent body uh, itself. And I guess we can note while we've got it here is it has the little hook here so that you can open up your door and hold your door open. Uh, there's more on the fly itself so that you can pull the fly back and we'll take a look at that also in a minute. So anyways, let me set up again and we'll put the fly on. Okay, we're gonna do the fly.
there it is right there so let's take a walk around and uh, we'll show you what we see okay so um, we're gonna start at the head of the tent here and the tent fly attaches uh, a little bit differently it has grommets that you actually lift it up and slip the grommet down underneath the existing grommet from the tent okay I don't know if you can see that but you lift you lift up your tent pole you slide the grommet down underneath and I can't do this with one hand but here's the fly it goes down the grommet is underneath so you just lift it up slip the grommet underneath there and then there's a little you can pull it up and tighten it up and incidentally there is a uh, uh, velcro fasteners inside here for to hold the fly to the uh, to the tent pole and we'll take a look at that from the inside so okay so at the head of the tent you have two grommets that hold it on one on one side one on the other and incidentally it should be noted that they color code this so that the gray strap from the fly matches to the gray strap on the tent so you kind of know what corner to start from you get over here and the strap from the fly and the tent are both the same color they're orange so you they're kind of color coded which is nice okay coming around to the vestibule all it is is one stake and what's really cool here is that they use a uh, Guy, a built-in guy line adjuster which I think is really cool and it works really well so basically you can almost do this with one hand see if you can get in there and get a real close look at it and there's a little notch and you pull it up and you're in now I don't know how long you know I don't know the longevity of this tent I've never had it out yet I hope to get it out in a couple of weeks um, but so far I'm impressed. It sets up nice and tight. Okay. On the uh, entrance side, you have now one gal I watched a video and she actually used these as guy outs. Uh, but that's not actually what they are. Both of these are designed so that you can unzip your vestibule, roll it up and tie it off so that you can keep it open if you want to. Okay. So let's work our way on around here. At the foot of the tent, you have both ends of the fly, instead of being held in with grommets like they are at the head of the tent, these ones just have this adjustable guy line, okay? And all it is is a hook at the end. You hook it around the existing stake that you had for your tent body. You just hook it around there. goes in real easy. Pretty much self-explanatory like I said the directions I wasn't really impressed with them really you got to kind of figure this stuff out on your own okay so there's one on that side one on this side okay and then coming around to this side the instructions didn't mention this at all I had to figure this one out so it looks like it's easy enough but down underneath here okay and if we come back out you see what I'm looking at we're on the back side of the tent here okay you've got one guy out here now here's the cool thing underneath here there is I don't know how well I can show you this but there's a little strap right here let's see here I'm trying to show and film at the same time there's a strap that is attached to the bottom of the fly here and incidentally this piece of cordage did not come with it I put that on myself when you get it all you get is this orange strap and at the other end of it is just a little quick lock that is part of the tent okay so when you put it together you take the fly you take the strap you attach it to the tent underneath and when you then pull out your guy line you can't see it but if you look through there you can see where it's attached to the tent when you pull the fly out, it also pulls out the wall of the tent from the inside. So it makes that wall more vertical, 
which I think is totally cool. That, I think they really thought that one out well, okay? So that to me, but it, it didn't tell me what it was. It took me just a couple of times and I'm like, wait a minute. And you know, I figured it out. So on this end, you do have two guy lines on the head of the tent. Okay, you can see them there in orange, left and right. Okay, left, right. Then it also has a frog eye, which is really, really cool. And incidentally, and you'll see it from the inside, but you can access this frog eye from the inside of the tent. The inside of the tent has a zipper in there where you can actually get in there and unzip it, reach out, set up your frog eye or close it, whichever you decide you want to do depending on weather conditions, uh, which is nice because I had another one with a frog eye and it didn't have that. And you'd get into your tent, you'd get all cozy and comfy, it'd be raining outside and then you'd realize you forgot to open up your, your little frog eye there. So, okay. So let's, uh, maybe I'll try to set up the tripod and we'll, we'll take another look here real quick as we access into the tent. Okay, so this is looking at the entrance of the tent from roughly a 45 degree angle. This is the entrance right here. It's got a Velcro closure at the bottom. Okay, nice little zipper. And as I was telling you, this is designed so you can see the vestibule space in there. It's not a lot, but it's sufficient. You can get your pack in there, your boots, whatever you need to put in there. This is also designed and my Mont Bell Thunderdome does not have this. I had to Mickey rig something. It is designed so that you can pull on a nice summer's evening. You can keep your rain fly on here and still keep your vestibule out of the way if you want to be able to, uh, you know, let a little bit more air into your tent. And incidentally, like I said, I guess in an emergency situation, if it's really windy and you need it, you could use those as guy outs for the fly if it was really stormy, okay? The only thing I would say that I'm not sure about is that there's no, there's no uh, way to stake it out right here. And the reason why I mention that is because when you unzip it, most tents you can unzip them with one hand. This one tends to, you know, not want to participate. You actually have to use two hands. And then it's real easy. I mean, it opens and closes pretty good but if you're doing it with one hand you got to get that other hand in there because it's a little bit loose right in here but that doesn't seem to in any way shape or form uh, affect the performance of the tent really so let's see we're gonna open this thing up completely Okay, so even if the vestibule was set up, getting in and out of this tent is pretty easy. It's that simple. There's lots of room inside this tent. I'm going to bring you in. You can check it out. Okay, so trying to uh, film the inside of a tent while you're holding the camera, I will do my very best to give you a full perspective on what you're going to see. Okay, so let's crawl on in here. And incidentally, you will see a few wrinkles in the tent right here. That is very easily cured by taking your two tent stakes at the bottom and just pulling them out a little bit. They can be stretched out a little bit tighter. You can make this tent floor almost perfectly flat. Very impressive, okay? So I'm about 5'9". I weigh about 160, and there is gang loads of room in here for me. All right, so right now, I'm laying down. I got about 
four inches above my head and close to a foot below me. There's a lot of room inside this tent. In a pinch, you could easily fit two people in this tent. It would not be hard to do. I mean, it'd be a little bit cramped, but, and you can't really tell by the footage, but these walls are ver near vertical from the ground up to that guy out point that I was telling you about that ties into the fly. It pulls this out so that this upper part of the wall is, is a perfectly right angle right here. Then it goes up at a very slight angle to the peak. And I don't know how they do it, but there is a lot of space in the head of this tent. You can set up clearly and have lots of room inside this tent. And incidentally, the entrance side of it also, kind of hard to tell, but as you can see, I'm holding the camera level. And as you can see, this portion of the tent is perfectly vertical. It does not go horizontal until right up, like I said, this is kind of hard to do, but right up in here is where it goes off at an angle. So the whole door, if I were to close it, which I'm not going to just because it's a hassle when you're holding the camera, but from here all the way across down to about right there and then all the way up this whole netted area this enclosure on this one side is all vertical which is kind of unheard of most small tents i looked at the competition and we won't name names but the headroom when you sat up was very very narrow there was like your head was touching on both sides this one you don't get that at all so uh in conclusion I love this tent. Lots of room, very lightweight. Uh, incidentally, I was going to mention right up here, there is your zipper. And there is your frog eye right there. Okay, you can access it from inside. Very, very cool. Okay, uh, another thing to be mentioned, let's bring everybody back right side up here again, is the... Uh, little cargo cargo area the goodie bag goes from one end of the tent okay not real deep all the way across and the advantage to that is a lot of them they make them real narrow and real deep which means all of your junk gets piled in this you can actually spread the stuff out a little bit you know depending on what you got it just makes it easier you know you want to keep your Kleenex in one area and your flashlight in the middle and however you want to do it, you can spread the stuff out so you're not digging to the bottom of a sack. I thought that was uh, another really great idea. Okay, last but not least, let's go upside down again. Didn't mention this before, is that they give you three little, let's see, where are they here? There is one right here by the door. Okay. One two, and three. There's not a fourth one over here in the corner by the zipper. So you can make a, uh, a little three-sided, and it probably comes as an accessory, but I don't, you know, you can hang a flashlight from it. You can hang a line across there to dry your socks. You can put up one of those little, uh, whatever they call those little things to put your stuff up there. I don't, use them because that's generally where you'll get condensation and I don't want to put a bunch of stuff up there that's going to get wet. So that is it in conclusion. I can't think of anything that I left out. Uh, I covered packaged and uh, minimum trail weight. Not overly impressed with the steaks. The steaks they give you, I mean they're just cheap steaks. And uh, I use the V steaks, they're super light. I looked at the titanium and I think you get three of them for like 29 bucks. Uh, I'm sorry, but I'd rather keep those extra grams of dollars in my pocket. So that is it. I can't possibly think of anything that I could have left out. If you guys have any questions or comments, 
Um, like I said, I've only been able to find a couple of other videos out there on this tent, which is why I was prompted to try to knock out a video as quick as I could and just uh, walk you through it. So I'm impressed. I love the tent, and I hope to get out in a couple of weeks, and I will give you some feedback on how it does. Uh, one thing to note, the floor on this obviously is thin. Uh, highly recommended that you do not take this out anywhere except for, you know, your local park on nice green grass for a setup like I just did and not have any kind of a ground cloth. And my recommendation is always been Tyvek. Um, I'm sure there's a ground cloth that goes with this, but it'll more than likely be heavier than the Tyvek. Uh, you can go online and you can get Tyvek at... Uh, uh, there's all sorts of websites out there. They sell it by the foot. Buy extra in case you ever plan on having a second tent or you have a friend that might be buying a tent or whatever. You're going to be paying the shipping fee, so I recommend that you purchase extra Tyvek. It's uh, nice to have, and uh, when I do my next review on how it did out in the field, you'll see the piece that I cut. And you basically just cut it for the parameter of your tent to fit right along the edge. You don't want it sticking out too much. Uh, you don't want it sticking out below the edge of the fly because if it does and it rains, then it'll pick up the water and it'll carry it up underneath your tent. So um, that's it. I'm going to put my shoes on and uh, head home. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, subscribe to my channel and, and like all my videos, even if you don't watch all of them. Uh, some of them are okay. Some of them, you know, whatever. I'm having fun doing it. And I hope you guys enjoy watching it. So that's it for me. Arch Backpacking 360. We'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, Arts Backpacking 360. Cheers for the new quarter dome you suck. Okay, let's try that again. Come on, check it out. Hey guys, our uh, yeah, here we go. Okay, quarter dome one, check it out. In detail, awesome, check it out. REI. Bite me. Shit, can't fucking believe it. Really? Detailed setups on the new setups. Really? I didn't like that at all. This just so sucks.